iridescent ocelot here. There's a certain stigma which is attached to cheating in the video game community. We've been told time and time again that cheating is wrong because gameplay is as much about the journey to your goal as it is the goal itself. Because in cheating, challenge is never an obstacle. But I want to play the devil's advocate today and defend cheating because I don't think I've heard enough people discuss the beauty of cheating. So that's why today I want to tell you how cheating can enhance gameplay. Because there is a certain beauty to exploiting and hacking a game, to access experiences beyond what the developer intended. There is something just immensely satisfying to storm through a game with buttery smooth ease, to unlock something so much earlier than you were supposed to, to gain the power of an omnipotent being whom neither algorithms nor the most challenging of trials can phase. It is certainly empowering to throw everything out the window. Progression systems, balance, levels. It is a breath of fresh air upon a wave of giddy excitement. I will say this though, I do not approve of cheating in a multiplayer game, as cheating in a multiplayer game ruins the experiences for others, especially if you are competing against other players. I mean, using an aimbot by yourself is something fine, but I don't think it's okay in multiplayer games. But I think we've gone a little bit too far, because to understand this, I think we need to start from the very start, because I'm going to take you on a journey through my experience of cheating. So we start our tale at Plants vs Zombies, and looking back, I can still say that this is one of the best tower defense games of all time, and although it has aged, I'd say it holds up to today's standards pretty well. However, it is weird to think that this game was the one which introduced me to the concept of cheating. Being so fascinated by the game, it was inevitable that I would be introduced to this community dedicated to hacking it. Upon my introduction, I was instantly enraptured. It was pure and unfiltered power, from entire lawns filled to the brim with wintermelons to gatling peas championed by a single row of torchwood. Cheating created moments of ridiculous gameplay, which although I myself did not use because I couldn't install Cheat Engine, I nonetheless appreciated. Hacking allowed for combinations and patterns of plants which would normally be impossible, and an eye zombie allowed for columns of gargantuas to flatten rows of plants in a matter of seconds. It was a spectacle indeed, taking in the full potential of vast firepower against colossal waves of zombies, which were also modded in and watching on in awe. It was this bewildering experience, which I don't think the developers could have ever thought of, that was so fun to the player. By throwing out gameplay in the conventional sense, I was able to witness a sight that bombarded me with scenes beyond my imagination, satisfaction and glee. How did cheating enhance the gameplay in Plants vs Zombies? Well, it broadened the systems of sun, cooldown rates and health, and in its place, set up a new set of rules, which the player determined. Because although we must sometimes protect players from themselves, I think it is equally important to trust in players to know what is most fun for them. Because reducing bosses to trifling encounters to witness challenges that stumped us for so long be, to be so utterly helpless in the face of cheats creates these precious moments of enjoyment. Now the question comes, was Plants vs Zombies the same afterwards? I mean once you knew the full and unfettered potential of the havoc you could wreak across the battlefield. Would there be less satisfaction which came with the original game? And this is the key argument around cheating. In giving yourself all the rewards from the start, would you rob yourself of the satisfaction of earning those rewards? And to answer that question succinctly, yes. It does rob you of the satisfaction of earning those rewards through hard work, earning progressively stronger and better items. But here's the key part. 
in exchange for the feeling of utter power. However, I do believe that you can still go back to the original game and play through it and gain that satisfaction. For example, I have hacked the game Legendary Wars I'm currently playing and doing a playthrough on. So when I did hack it, I immediately chose to evolve my soldiers to their legendary forms, which made for the fastest and most exhilarating playthrough as I tore through the enemy monsters. In doing so, I acknowledge that I lost the challenge of facing off against foes of the same level because the odds were heavily stacked in my favour. However, I'm still able to go back after finishing that hack playthrough and enjoy the challenge which the game affords me with in playthrough. After all, cheating is a side experience. If you were just to experience the cheated version, it would be less fun. As for Plants vs Zombies, cheating only helped accentuate my love for the game and its mechanics when they were distorted beyond any reasonable measure. And I think I'm going to leave that there for now because I want to visit my next experience with cheating. And I think that was in Pokemon. Now the Pokemon series is something that is rather close to my heart because I've played Pokemon Blue, Emerald, Sapphire, Pearl, Platinum, Silver and Heart Gold. I think I only ended up finishing two, but I have an eternal love for the series. In fact, my introduction to Pokemon was mostly watching my older brother play through the games, and I remember the times he would tell me about Eevees and Ivies and Natures. I mean, boy, do I have some fond memories of Pokemon. Like that time when my f friend told me there was a Pokemon virus which helped your Pokemon called Pokerus, and I didn't believe him, but it's actually a thing. Search it up. Okay, but we're getting off topic, because despite all this, the one game which I hold unreservedly above the rest is Pokemon Platinum. And it wasn't because the series hadn't gotten a stale at that point, but because of cheating. I remember using an application called PPSE, Project Pokemon's Save Editor on Pokemon Platinum. And once I had conquered Victory Road and finished the Elite Four, I immediately set upon using PPSE to cheat. Now for those who don't know PPSE, PPSE essentially allows you to edit your Pokemon. So what I did is edited all my Pokemon to have perfect EVs and IVs, and of course the usual 999,999,999 currency and times 999 master words. But no, it didn't stop there, because PPSE allows you to edit your Pokemon's abilities to any ability in the game. And from that, I was able to create the most broken Pokemon in the entire game. What do I mean? Let me paint a picture. Exhibit A, what I did was create a speed form Deoxys with ability no guard meaning that all moves are 100% accurate. Then I gave it all the one-hit KO moves, Sheer Cold, Fisher, Guillotine, and Horn Drill. And keep in mind, Deoxys doesn't have a horn. Now, Deoxys speed form in the Platinum generation has one of the highest speeds in the entire game. So essentially, I had a one-hit killing machine, which would always hit with one-hit KO moves, and always hit first. Thus, I could finish an entire team of level 100 Pokemon without so much as taking a scratch. But let's take a look at Exhibit B, because what I did was create a level 1 Aaron with a Focus Sash, Endeavor, and Quick Attack. Now for those who don't know, a Focus Sash allows a Pokemon to survive one attack which would normally cause it to faint. Endeavor reduces the HP of the enemy Pokemon to one health and Quick Attack always takes priority, unless the opponent also uses Quick Attack or Extreme Speed. So what I would do is go against level 75 Pokemon at the Battle Frontier and pit my level 1 Aaron against them and use Endeavor. The other Pokemon, being so much faster, would hit first, reducing my Aaron to 1 HP. It was then that my Aaron would use Endeavor, 
reducing the other opponent to 1 HP as well. Then I would use Quick Tack to finish off the opponent. And the thing is, no matter how much defense a Pokemon has, the least amount of damage you can do in Pokemon is 1 HP. Which is a coincidence because Quick Attack would just finish off a level 100 Pokemon. And believe it or not, I used an entire team of Arons with this same strategy to defeat Lieutenant Surge at the Battle Frontier. And it was absolutely amazing. To top off this list of my completely broken Pokemon, I had a Spiritomb who had, who, because of his ghost dark typing, has no moves which are super effective against it, and gave it Wonder Guard. Now, Wonder Guard is an ability which means that any move which is not super effective deals zero damage. So, what this meant was I went around with a Spiritomb which literally nothing could touch. I even had my HM Slave by Barrel at level 100 with all your standard HM Slave moves. Perfect EVs and IVs with Waterfall, Surf, Cut and Strength. Who believe it or not was surprisingly useful in battle. And another by Barrel with of course, you know it, Fly. And the rest of the HMs including Defog, Flash and Rock Climb. I mean, every time I had to fly to another location, I would get a good laugh. Seeing the cutscene switch to a by barrel, and then imagining the Pokemon silhouette being a by barrel flying through the screen. It was amazing. And it was ridiculous, as you can expect. I raised through the battle frontier, back through the Elite Four for laughs, and it was great. It was glorious is what it was, because I had so much fun with these Pokemon and catching every legendary with a Master Ball, not even having to care about money or strategy. Just blazing through everyone with my really broken team. And that is an experience that I will never forget, despite playing through many of the other games, including the original Pokemon Blue on the black and white Game Boy. And that is why Pokemon Platinum, to me, holds a special place in my heart, because I was able to muck around, subvert the game's rules and authority over me. It was another experience which sat alongside but separate from my normal experience of Pokemon Platinum. My experience in training my Pokemon to the max, in carefully selecting which Pokemon to catch and train, and the satisfaction of watching them evolve. This difference in these wonderful experiences was all because of the cheats and exploits I used. All of these pre are precious memories to me because cheating creates special experiences for players and I do get that it's all well and good to be challenged, but absolute power in its purest form can sometimes be an equally fun experience. I also want to cover two games called Borderlands 1 and 2 and for those who don't know, I am absolutely obsessed with this game. It's a first person shooter and I love it. My brother and I used to play it for the better part of three years and it is marvelous. Amazing gunplay, replayability, a stellar loot system with a difficulty curve that I highly admire, cell shaded graphics and a game which encouraged a hyper aggressive style of gameplay and a quirky satirical humor which makes these games distinctly borderlands. These two games are two of the best of all time. I'm probably going to make a video properly covering my obsession with this video game, but under the lens of cheating, I want to talk about Borderlands 1, because in the DLC, The Secret Armory of General Knox, there is a glitch in which you can raid this Crimson Armory with no time limit. What's supposed to happen is you're supposed to have 2 minutes and 45 seconds to loot the place before it blows up. But instead, if you fall through this gap in the floor, you can loot the armory at your leisure. And here's the thing, as many times as you please. Add to the fact that this one location has the highest amount of crimson chests, which are these things here, which have the best rare item spawns and you have a wickedly awesome cheat. And this raises some questions. In a game like Borderlands, which is all about looting and finding better guns, shields and grenade mods, doesn't 
cheating defeat the purpose? And my answer to that would be no. Because despite doing this multiple times, and by that I mean like 30, 40 times, my brother and I played through the game about 7-ish times. Full, complete playthroughs, if my memory serves me. And that was followed by another 5 complete playthroughs of Borderlands 2, where I didn't hack because I have the Xbox 360 version and no cheat engine. However, just look at this gameplay on PC. Even without understanding the rarity of these weapons in normal gameplay, which is around 1 in 10,000 from any random enemy, the explosion of gold, purple iridium, and orange legendaries is enough to make anyone smile. And I would get the comment that a lot, a lot of what makes something valuable is how rare it is, and by taking that away, you're essentially breaking the game. However, I would say that that might be the case for some games, because I do acknowledge that not all games are suitable for cheating, but Borderlands is. That is because Borderlands itself is about not only the guns, but improving your skill to dispatch foes with ease, and in the case of co-op, such as what I experienced with my brother, to cooperate with one another to take down foes. Another thing which was that the game motivates you to play the DLC at a higher level and is quite late in the DLC. So you already have an appreciation for what the quote unquote normal game is like. Moreover, even with the best guns in the entire game, the game is still extremely replayable as you can play with different builds and characters because part of the game is about optimizing your character to the extreme and becoming more skilled at the game. And also, just modding broken weapons into the game to reduce raid bosses such as the infamous Pyrapeat to shreds, just holding the left and right triggers with Salvador. And to top it all off, Skyrim. I might also note that all the games that I mentioned are also my favourites, and the fact that cheating played a part in each was no small chance, as it helped enhance my enjoyment of each of these games. Because cheating can add so much to a game and make it that much more memorable. So how did cheating play a role in my experience with Skyrim? Well I guess the first moment which really blew my mind, and I remember to this day, is in the Thieves Guild. Yeah, that place where you get the Nightingale armor, and with that pool of water in the middle of the room. And I looked up a tutorial in which you can clip through the door and gain access to the merchant's wares from a chest under the floor. And I mean this realization that there were chests under every merchant was something so hilarious but also fun. Like I would sell the merchant a fur chest plate from a wayward bandit that had tried to steal from me only to pick it back in the pack up in the chest along with all his gold. And the brilliant thing is that taking from the chest counted as stealing, so sometimes it would glitch out and the NPCs could see you below the floor, so they would all of a sudden become hostile, which was the most hilarious thing because they'd run about trying to hit you through the wall. This entire incident didn't end there, as you can actually no clip through any wall in the game. What this evolved out of was this clumsy collision detection which allowed you to pass through walls if you held up a platter or plate to the wall and ran through it with precise timing. And the small interactions which the developers didn't intend, like being able to complete and obtain the ebony blade in Dragon's Reach without even getting the quest by just holding up platters up against a wall are amazing. They give life to the game. Exploitation which would most fit under the definition of a traditional cheat is the glitch with the Ogma Infini Infinium, and I remember doing this, in which you can level up all your skills up to 100, and it still works, but only on my Xbox 360 version. And although not technically a cheat, who could have forgotten the simple-minded AI in Skyrim? I remember constantly exploiting this by making it my duty to ass assassinate 
every single guard in the entire game I saw without incurring a bounty. Of course, it's impossible to do so because the guards respawn, but what I meant is to kill each guard at each location at least once. And I can say that I failed, but I tried. <laughs> and this extends to the actual gameplay, where the AI was so simple-minded. You could literally talk to a white run soldier right next to a corpse, and he wouldn't bat an eyelid. Or you could launch an arrow into a Falmo, or kill his buddy, and he would look around for two seconds before going back to what he was doing. Or just killing the Ebony Warrior, the hardest enemy in the game in the cheapest way possible by pickpocketing all his clothes and his weapons, which is just hilarious because he becomes a cakewalk. Unsurprisingly. And let's not forget about the part, the infamous bucket glitch, in which you can put buckets on people's heads and then steal all their stuff without them noticing. People might say that it's game breaking to be able to pick up a bowl and put it on someone else's head and then steal their stuff and leave. But I think these exact accidental moments are golden in a game like Skyrim and create unique experiences. And although this isn't so much of a cheat as an exploit, but I remember going to High Hrothgar and constantly sneak attacking the Greybeards with a dagger to improve my stealth to a level 100. It was just amazing. I did the same thing to the invulnerable soldier at the start of the game who follows you and it was hilarious. Like he would say, who's there? When I was obviously the one behind him, stabbing him with a dagger, training my stealth. Or even pickpocketing a Forsworn Briarheart's actual heart, killing them in the process, which was pretty comedic because you would steal their heart and then they would collapse on the floor. Ah, Skyrim. And I know none of these are exactly cheating, per se, but I put them in here because they are exploiting a weakness, an unintended glitch, to create a more entertaining experience. And in that way, they are effectively the same as a cheat. Because given the time, I'm sure that developers would have cut them out. But as they cut them out, they would have cut out these amazing experiences also. And that isn't even covering Skyrim modding, which is a community that is still alive today, thanks to YouTubers like MXR, who show how much cheating in a game can engage people more in it. From modifying Skyrim to have 4K textures, even better than the base game, to using shaders and ENBs to improve how the game looks, the possibilities are endless. I mean, I got Skyrim for PC even though I had it on the Xbox 360 just for the mods, and I wasn't disappointed whatsoever. And I would be remiss not to make a mention of New Super Mario Bros on the Nintendo DS, in which I cheated to have infinite big mushrooms so I could stomp through levels. I mean, just look at this gameplay of the first level to see just how amazing it was. The thing is, each one of these games is enough to cover an entire video and even entire channels, which are solely dedicated to Skyrim, Pokemon, and Plants vs Zombies. And I myself will make a lot of videos on these games in the future, diving into the full reasons into why I like them so much. Look, in summary, I don't think that cheating is as vile as many would lead you to believe, as it can lead to some of the most creative and innovative of gameplay. And that's what games are at the end of the day about having fun, which is something that cheats have the potential to bring out in games. They can ruin the experiences you are supposed to have, but I believe you can still gain back those experiences by playing it without cheats. I mean, in this video, I've barely scratched the surface about this topic, and I'm already up to 4,000-ish words. But there is one more point that I want to discuss, and that is the idea that cheated games get old rather quickly. And I actually disagree this point because I think that it depends upon the game. Because there is so much you can do besides leveling up your character. The game isn't just based on levels. There is story, lore, side quests, thousands of things to keep you interested for hours. And in the case of Borderlands, even with cheating, there are hundreds of thousands of combinations of different weapons. And even with raiding an armory filled to the brim with weapons, it is still really difficult to find a legendary weapon that you want. 
The games which are unsuitable cheating to cheating are more like Plant vs Zombies, which is dictated purely by a currency. In this case, Sun. And if you were to have Infinite Sun, I could see that getting boring after a while. However, that does not discount the initial experience with cheats. That was so amazing. And there is always the option of going back and playing without cheats. How would I personally advise cheating? I would inv advise doing a proper playthrough without cheats first, or at least be in the late game before doing a playthrough with cheats, because then you can appreciate the cheats so much more, and you have experienced the normal playthrough as well. I want to end off with this, hacking isn't something bad. I do acknowledge that hacking and cheating does take away from the original experience, the challenge and sometimes the components which form parts of their identities. But that's okay, because cheating makes separate experiences that are mentally different. Do I think making games straight out of the box as broken as I played them is a good idea? No. You see, the power of cheats is their ability to be so completely different from the status quo. They aren't meant to be the main gameplay, and it is only because of the fantastic games behind the cheats, which is why I appreciate them all the more. Do I think they should be an option in the side menu? Yes, perhaps as an unlockable after you've finished the game to add extra replayability. Why? Well, because as game developers, you simply can't think of every possible scenario. It is an impossible task to do so, but by allowing cheats and modifications, you can create things that players can truly appreciate. And that is the beauty of cheating in a nutshell. I could talk about this topic for a whole lot more, but these are the examples which I think embody the beauty of cheating the most. And that's it. This was a wonderful experience for me, just reliving all my favorite memories I made with these games. Thank you very much for being here, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Iridescent Ocelot, out.